Well, thank you, Ms. Serpin, board members, Dr. Eckert, Dr. Lewis, Dr. DeStefano, Dr. Fries, other distinguished guests, colleagues, friends, and family, and especially new graduates. Good afternoon and welcome to the virtual graduation exercises for the class of 2020. I really wish we were not doing this virtually, but we were doing this at the Kimmel Center in person. But as you know, circumstances have dealt us another hand. Well, we all realize this isn't exactly what you expected, it isn't what any of us expected. We're gonna do our best to celebrate your successes and accomplishments in the best way possible. Let me start by saying congratulations. I'm so glad everybody is able to join us, even if it's virtually. As I would have done if we were meeting in person, we're doing this around Memorial Day weekend. And I think it's really important that we observe a moment of silence in respect to Memorial Day and those who have given their lives so that we can enjoy these freedoms that we have. Thank you. As we get started here, I'd like to thank the world's best faculty for all the work that they have done in preparing our students for this day. I'd also like to thank our Board of Trustees and acknowledge them for giving us the support that they have given so that Salus can really flourish. In the Navy, when an aircraft carrier commences their flight operations, they fly what's called the Fox flag, and that's this flag right next to me. And that's to let everybody know that we're launching aircraft, look out. Well, today, we're also flying the Fox flag here at Salus, as we have done since I've been here, to acknowledge the fact that we're launching a whole new set of graduates, and everybody needs to look out. So look out, everyone, because here comes the class of 2020. A famous quote by Charles Darwin goes something like this. It is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent, but the one most responsive to change. We're certainly living and experiencing these world, words today, adjusting to change brought on by the most unprecedented circumstances in our nation's recent history, and that's the COVID-19 pandemic. Resistance, responsiveness, innovation, evolution, and flexibility is how our, our institution is responding. Now, a brief bit of history to put this all in perspective. Before COVID-19, the last devastating pandemic to hit the United States was the Spanish flu. I wrote about that in one of my weekly updates, and that occurred in 1918. Now, that date should really spark some memories for some of you. Because in September of that year, Philadelphia witnessed a wave of casualties eventually tallying 16,000 with over 500,000 infections within the first six months of its onset. But that same year, or close to that year, our founding institution, the Pennsylvania College of Optometry, was also launched in Philadelphia in the midst of that pandemic. In January of 1919, while the city was still struggling to contain the pandemic, PCO was launched. Despite this public health disaster, our founders forged ahead, pulled their resources together, developing innovative and cutting edge curriculum for that time, responding to the needs of the patient like we always have, advocating and making legislative inroads so that optometry would be, as our first president, Albert Fitch put it, being on par with other medical professions. And we've realized that. Now, it's 101 years later, our institution finds itself again in the midst of a historical pandemic. But just like in 1919, we continue to innovate, we continue to evolve, and we continue to be responsive. As I alluded to earlier, for the first time in our history, we're doing a commencement virtually. Believe me, it wasn't my first choice, and I know it certainly was not your first choice. I applaud all of your graduates for your understanding, and I really thank you for your flexibility. Secondly, I applaud our faculty and staff for managing to keep our ship afloat these last few months by adapting to new technologies and innovative ways to instruct and manage our very complex curricula. You all are rock stars, and you have really set the tone for what this institution is all about. 
Lastly, we do have something to celebrate this year. This, is, this year marks the 20th anniversary of the George Osborne College of Audiology, our second oldest college. Like others before him in our institution's history, Dr. George Osborne was a visionary in the movement to have the Doctor of Audiology degree recognized as an entry-level degree for this profession. He believed that a strong clinical component curriculum would be critical to the success of that goal and a clinical faculty vital to the education of the student, just like the PCO model. And today we have the only standing college of, uh, of audiology in the country thanks to the vision of Dr. Osborne. So this time, I'm gonna switch gears a little bit, and I'd like to acknowledge two world-class leaders that we have today here at the, at the institution. Our, on, our honorary degree recipient, Dr. Anthony DiStefano, and our orator, Dr. Thomas Lewis, both of them my mentors. Well, in a minute, Dr. Lewis will speak to, uh, to Dr. DiStefano's multiple accomplishments. I'd like to take a moment to publicly thank Tony for everything that he contributed to PCO, to me personally as my teacher, as my instructor and my mentor, and what he did as a leader and an administrator at this institution. Together with our president emeritus, Dr. Lewis, Dr. DiStefano honed his vision and dreams for the university that we're at today into a clear path for Salas's future. From moving the campus to Elkins Park, to diversifying the academic program to be more interprofessional in approach, Tom and Tony assured that our future is not only bright, but also continues to be well ahead of the pack. You see again, it's all grounded in Darwin. And I quote, in the long history of humankind, and also animal kind, those who learn to collaborate and improvise most effectively have prevailed. And we, we have done more than prevailed. We have thrived under their leadership. So this university continues to manage through this exceptional times, you all will be the ones that chart and forge our path into the future. You've been given the tools to improvise, you've been given the tools to collaborate, and you've been given the tools to be responsive for the betterment of your chosen professions. What a great opportunity you have. At this point in my remarks, I, I really try to import several tidbits of wisdom, but they've told me to keep this short. So I, I'm gonna talk about one. Now a, a now famous Navy Admiral said during a commencement speech that the most important thing you can do to, to start your day is to make your bed. Well, I'm not a famous Navy Admiral, and I'm not so sure I totally agree with that. I think the most important thing you can do when starting your day is to think about what you will do to make somebody else's life better. What are you going to personally do to improve the lives of somebody else? It doesn't have to be much, but whatever you, whatever you do to enhance somebody's life can pay untold dividends for that patient, that person, and also for yourself. With that, I extend my heartiest congratulations again to you and your families and all your loved ones for your most significant achievement. Best wishes and God bless. Now I'd like to welcome Jessica Page Lesnoy from the College of Education and Rehabilitation's Occupational Therapy Program, who's gonna deliver the graduate address. Thank you and good luck. Thank you, President Middleman. It's my honor to deliver the spring 2020 commencement speech today in front of this incredible student body. I want to take the time to recognize the wonderful faculty and staff from all of South University's programs who are part of commencement today, including occupational therapy, audiology, biomedicine, blindness and low vision studies, optometry, public health, and speech language pathology. The South faculty represents some of the brightest minds in the health science, basic science, and education field. I have had the privilege of experiencing firsthand how incredible the professors are in the occupational therapy program. They have treated my cohort as respected colleagues while providing us with the leadership and knowledge we need to grow professionally. The Salas faculty have been more than just teachers to us. They have served as mentors and role models that have successfully prepared us to make a difference in our respective fields. None of us would be standing where we are today without the mentorship, 
and education provided by the faculty. I cannot believe we have finally made it to this day. We have spent countless days and nights studying at the library, and sometimes it seemed like it would never end. At times, the only thing getting us through the days were email chains about free soft pretzels or promises that loving therapy dogs were on their way to offer cuddles and support. Okay, maybe those weren't the only things keeping us going. We also had the support from our friends, family, and peers to push us through those challenging times. I know that I never could have gotten through this program without the support and encouragement from both my family and my friends in the occupational therapy program. I feel confident saying I share these feelings with everyone graduating today. There were times when my friends at Salus were the only ones who understood the unique challenges of being in a rigorous health science graduate program. They helped me stay on track in my studies, but even more importantly, they reminded me to take breaks and step back to appreciate how far we had come. Now more than ever, it is important to find friends and colleagues who provide us with positivity and encouragement to support our growth as professionals. We are all future healthcare education and research professionals. And we are currently watching the healthcare community work together to overcome a global pandemic. During this uncertain time, the healthcare community is banding together to come up with creative, out of the box solutions to help the public. Recently, thousands of healthcare organizations and therapy companies have switched to a telemedicine model, which is new territory for both new and experienced healthcare professionals. I have personally seen hundreds of posts on online forums for occupational therapists sharing their resources, techniques, and coping strategies to get through these challenging times in this new era of teletherapy. These therapists are willing to take the time out of their already busy schedules to help complete strangers, simply because of their allegiance to the profession's values and their patient's overall well-being. I have no doubt that all healthcare, education, and research professionals are engaging in similar positive behaviors right now to support their profession. It is inspiring to see how willing all of these professionals are to help each other stay positive and informed during unprecedented times. I have also seen how flexible these professionals can be, as they will stop at nothing to put their patients, students, and clients first. I am honored to be joining a profession filled with so many compassionate, insightful, and creative minds. Just like everyone else, we are facing difficult and unprecedented times right now and it is easy to get wrapped up in the inconveniences this has caused us all. For example, many of us have had to postpone our clinical rotations or studies, which is delaying our ability to jump into the workforce. However, we must keep the big picture in mind and realize that this time at home is not time wasted. We are part of the fight right now to protect healthcare, education, and research professionals, our future colleagues and friends. We must remain optimistic during these difficult times and remember that once we get through this crisis, we will be more creative, intelligent, and resilient because of it. We should also be grateful that we have been given the opportunity to continue learning, connecting, and celebrating our achievements virtually over the past few months, and today in particular. These hard times will pass, and we will soon be joining our heroes out in the real world. At Salus, we have not only had the experience to learn from students within our own profession, but also from students across all programs. My time here has taught me the importance of interprofessional collaboration. We have all had the opportunity to learn from students and professors from all the professions represented at Dallas through interprofessional courses as well as guest lectures from various disciplines. We've been able to advocate for our own profession scope of practice as well as understand the overlapping and yet distinct roles of every discipline represented at Dallas. This collaboration with other professionals helps drive holistic care for our future patients, students, and clients. These opportunities will assist us in all of our future careers as we navigate working with individuals with complex needs. Not every graduate and professional program provides so many opportunities for this interprofessional collaboration, which is one of the qualities that makes Salus University so special. Although we may be leaving the comfort of Salus's walls, May we never stop seeking opportunities to learn from each other and change our world for the better. I will leave you with this quote, helping one person may not change the whole world, but it could change the world for one person. Congratulations to the class of 2020. Now let's get out there and change someone's world. President Middleman, members of the Board of Trustees, faculty, 
graduates, family, and friends. An institution periodically has the unique opportunity to recognize one of its own. An individual who has had a seminal impact on the growth, development, mission, and moral compass of an institution. Today, Salas is doing just that. Dr. Anthony F. DiStefano has been associated with the Pennsylvania College of Optometry and now Salas University in some capacity for 51 years. After graduating from PCO in 1973, Dr. DiStefano pursued his love of teaching and of healthcare, receiving a master's in education from Temple University and a master's in public health from Johns Hopkins University. With this background and unique perspective, he joined the faculty of PCO in 1974. Dr. DiStefano's talents were quickly realized as he was appointed special assistant to the president for strategic planning, resulting in the college's first five-year plan. In 1979, he became the assistant and then associate dean of academic development. In this role, he acquired a keen interest in research and in improving services to the visually impaired. This led to the creation of the first ever Master of Science degree in vision rehabilitation within a college of optometry. Soon after, he conceptualized and developed the Institute for the Visually Impaired, for which he served as the acting executive director. As far back as 1980, Dr. DiStefano and others realized that the importance of expanding optometry into primary care and saw PCO as more than a single purpose optometry college, but as an institution with diversifying academic profile and a much broader healthcare mission. When I became president of PCO in 1989, my first and easiest decision was to offer Dr. DiStefano the position of vice president and dean. He had already worked with me for 14 years, and I was always impressed by his intelligence and problem-solving abilities. In this role, he continued the expansion of PCO by exploring opportunities on a global level. Dr. DiStefano directed and the formation of a Center for International Program programs, which among other accomplishments, offered the first ever Master of Science in Clinical Optometry degree for international eye care providers. This led to Dr. DiStefano becoming more personally involved in global optometry as Secretary of the World Optometry Foundation and then Executive Director of the World Council of Optometry for 10 years, ultimately moving its headquarters to our Elkins Park campus. In those roles, he achieved official relations status between the World Council of Optometry and the World Health Organization, and developed and implemented the first World Conference on Optometric Education. Throughout his entire time as Vice President and Dean, Dr. DiStefano was strongly committed to a vibrant institutional research program, distinctive among private colleges of optometry. He personally participated in bringing in over $8 million of external research grants. In my opinion, the decade from 2000 to 2010 was the most impactful in the 101 year history of this institution. Our mission for PCO began to expand beyond vision into other key healthcare professions that were symbiotic with each other. And as you might imagine, at the center of many events of that decade was Dr. DiStefano. Within optometry, he began a transformative new curriculum soon followed by a three-year accelerated scholars program. Working closely with Dr. George Osborne, PCO began Doctor of Audiology programs, not only for new students, but also for practicing audiologists. This was soon followed by master's and or doctorate level programs in physician assistant studies, biomedicine, occupational therapy, and the beginning of planning for speech language pathology. And of course, Dr. DiStefano's beloved Master's in Public Health program. In the midst of this programmatic expansion, it became evident that we had to change our name and move to university status in order to be able to recruit 
students into all of our new programs. We were granted university status by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania in 2008. And guess who, who came up with the name Salas? Yep, Tony DiStefano. On a personal level, I realized after working closely with Dr. DiStefano for over 30 years that we were very, very different. Different in personality, temperament, patience, optimism, and management style. The staff at the institution, and I'm sure the board, often wondered, how did we coexist? How did we accomplish anything? How did we agree on anything? All I know is that working together, we accomplished quite a bit because we shared a common vision for the institution and for the importance of healthcare, and because we always respected each other's points of view. I actually believe it was our differences that led to more balanced positions on key issues and better decisions. It was truly an honor to have led this institution with him for a quarter century. Throughout his career, Dr. DiStefano has served and been recognized by many organizations, such as the American Optometric Association, the American Academy of Optometry, the American Public Health Association, <clears throat> excuse me, and the World Health Organization, Helen Keller International, and many others. The reasons for this recognition, recognition are based on his character and attributes, his brilliance, insightfulness, humility, tireless energy, mastery of the written and spoken word, but most important, his compassion. If asked to name five individuals throughout the history of this institution who have contributed most to its growth, development, and mission, I can assure you Dr. DiStefano would be on that list. Therefore, President Middleman, it is my distinct honor and privilege to recommend that Salish University express its gratitude and thanks for a lifetime of dedication and accomplishments by bestowing the degree Doctor of Science Honoris Causa on Dr. Anthony F. DiStefano at this time. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, by power vested in it by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, I confer upon you the honorary degree Doctor of Science and present to you the appropriate diploma. During his address, please observe that Dr. DiStefano is adorned with the hood that symbolized this high honor which he so richly adores. Good afternoon. Thank you, President Emeritus Dr. Lewis, for your humbling remarks. The many accomplishments that you listed would not have been possible without your decades of support and leadership. Also, my deepest thanks to Board Chair Joe Serpent, Board Members Dr. Middleman, Dr. Eckert, Dr. Fries, and other distinguished guests, colleagues, friends, and mentors who have supported this recognition and inspired my journey at PCO Salas. My brief remarks today to the Salas University class of 2020 encompasses three themes. The first is legacy, the second is public health, and the third is political action. Legacy is our institutional foundation. Public health is our personal and professional responsibility as our university named Salas envisions. And the third political action is the critical dimension to transforming the healthcare system to one in which you will prosper. As President Middleman stated, our institutional legacy is rooted in our founders' courage and leadership to establish a progressive college of optometry. This bold step in the midst of an historic pandemic that occurred a century ago should make, motivate each of us to live up to this legacy. At this moment of uncertain, of anxiety and of frustration, this is not the time to flinch, to recoil, to hesitate. This is the time to build on our common heritage as service providers in the fields of healthcare, education, rehabilitation, and biomedical research. This heritage now unites us in a shared responsibility. 
Our institutional genome is a reflection of the hundreds of individuals over the last 100 years who have brought us to this point. Don't disappoint them. Put your legacy to work. Be confident, be proactive, and be thankful. Today, there's no better way to put our legacy to work than by acknowledging that our public health system in the United States has been neglected and bordering on panic. We have become faithful, painfully aware that in fact, we are all public health professionals fighting a common enemy, COVID-19. Today, teleconferencing technology has brought us together, underscoring the incredible contributions that technology and biomedicine have made to improving people's lives. At the same time, we are acutely challenged by what remains to be done and asked the question as to why technology has failed us today. Ventilators, masks, pharmaceutical treatments, vaccines, et cetera. How did we get here? Why has our public health system been so woefully undervalued and neglected? Our health policies, our national politics and economics have failed us in responding to the many inadequacies of our public health infrastructure. We are not prepared for COVID-19. In spite of the many warnings, most importantly, we have learned that public health is a community affair. How much death and suffering can we tolerate before we recognize that we are totally interdependent? Every member of the community is either a part of promoting our collective health or part of threatening it. Our SALUS mission and vision personify this philosophy. And this philosophy is not only of being interprofessionally interdependent, but of taking on a holistic philosophy that recognizes that each individual bears personal responsibility, not only for their own health, but also for that of their neighbors. For example, those who are practicing social distancing are a living example of this principle. Those who are not, have failed this most basic dimension of health being a community affair. In this time of public health crisis, everyone is an essential part of overcoming the challenge. Not only frontline health workers in the ERs or ICUs, but also the myriad of countless individuals, the EMT workforce, community volunteers, grocery store clerks, the grocery delivery drivers, the sanitation workers, the transit bus driver, the hospital maintenance worker, the migrant farm worker who are indispensable to the food chain. Yes, public health is a community affair, the essence of what you and all of us should stand by. Political action is the third critical dimension to transforming the healthcare system. Politics has shown its best and its worst. Politics is an absolute imperative in translating the principle of health as a community affair because it determines the public health policies, strategies, and leadership that will take us towards realizing the absolute need for universal health care. Politics is not a dirty word, but a matter of life and death. I implore you to never miss the opportunity to confront a crisis and define who you are and who we are. These three personal commencement reflections that I have shared with you, legacy, public health, and political action, underscore the strategic value of public health to all of us. I conclude my message to you, the graduates today, by appealing to you to take one word away with you from this eventful day, and it's not public health. Even though I appeal to you to never look at yourselves as individual health education, rehabilitation and biomedical research professionals, but rather as public health professionals with a shared responsibility to public service. No, the word is not SALUS either, which defines our institution's unifying mission and vision of promoting and living our health and well being. No, it's not legacy, even though I appeal to you to respect and build upon this institution's leadership heritage. It's your responsibility now to advance it. No, 
the one word that I want you to remember from today is vote. And you're right, I'm closing with a necessary political action statement, a message, the same message that I have left my students with at the end of each course that I've taught. And that is, when you think of public health, realize that the most important aspect of public health is that public health is not a noun. Public health is a verb. It really doesn't matter what public health knowledge you have if you don't put it to work. Putting it to work demands political action. It demands leadership. The best way to live this leadership responsibility is to recognize voting as the critical element in your public health careers. Never lose the opportunity to practice public health by voting in every local, state, and federal election. This is where public health policy is made and where the health and well being of our society is determined. Also, be active in your professional organizations in the pursuit of this responsibility. Today, probably more than any time in our national history, voting is the critical determinant of your future and of our collective health and well being. Thank you to the class of 2020 and my sincerest best wishes for your personal and professional success. Stay healthy, stay safe, and vote to ensure your influence on public health. I would like to close with my deepest thanks and appreciation to my wife, Jeannie, my children, Paula and Anthony, and my wonderful granddaughter, Rafaela, and my entire family who have given me the freedom, the inspiration, and the support over the last 45 years at this institution. This award today is a recognition of their unrecognized contributions to my professional journey. Thank you. And again, congratulations to the class of 2020. Good luck. President Middleman, platform party, faculty and administration, graduates and friends. It is a pleasure to announce the honors earned by our graduates. Please direct your attention to the program booklet. Each honor is named along with a brief citation so that we may recognize those members of the graduating class today with family and friends present. Honors recipients are presented on the university website, www.salis.edu forward slash commencement. Congratulations to each recipient as we recognize and celebrate your achievement. Mr. President, upon recommendation of the faculty of the Department of Blindness and Low Vision Studies and the faculty of the Department of Speech Language Pathology and the faculty of the Department of Occupational Therapy, each from the College of Education and Rehabilitation, along with the faculty of the Osborne College of Audiology and the faculty of the Department of Public Health and the College of Health Sciences, I am pleased to present to you the class of 2020, all of whom have fulfilled the requirements for the degrees of Masters of Education Master of Public Health, and Master of Science. I recommend that these earned degrees be awarded to each candidate at this time. Candidates for the Master of Education, Master of Science, and Master of Public Health degrees, upon the recommendation of your faculty, I, representing the Board of Trustees, by power vested in it by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, do now individually confer upon you your earned degree. We recognize each of you as your name is announced. Master of Education, Sarah Boudwin, Jane Ann Kyanen, William Edward Hanyashak III, 
Master of Science in Low Vision Rehabilitation. Yi Hawei Lim. Manami Christy Okoshi. Emily Elizabeth Smith. Master of Science in Orientation and Mobility. Cora Fay Franz. Douglas E. Gilbert. Caroline Elizabeth Marks. Shannon C. Spicer. Master of Science in Vision Rehabilitation Teaching. Evans Darko. Christina Lorraine Grove. Lauren Hanrahan. Katie Lee Lepis. Max Gabriel Manson. Tyrus Neymar Ortega. Critica Singh. Master of Science in Speech Language Pathology. Marissa Renee Agaldo. Olivia Lucien Aloisi. Carly E. Bailey. Jesslyn Nicole Baker. Molly E. Brennan. Elizabeth Page DeBeradinas. Krupa N. Dosai. Tara Catherine Dingley. Nicole Ann Duffy. Kristen Elizabeth Fitzgerald. Caitlin Aaron Fleming. Emily Claire Janini. Casey L. Heffelfinger. Samantha Lynn Herthler. Yejin Hong. Leanne P. Hurley. Alexis Giuliano. Elizabeth Kirkner. Jacqueline Elizabeth Colano. Alexandra N. Liner. Sarah Marie Mackle. Paige Elizabeth Maino. Kara Victoria McCullough. Cassidy Taylor Mertz. Gabrielle Olshanskaya. Elena Scarlett Salas. Megan Elizabeth Schaefer. Kristen Ann Schlotter. Lindsay Jessica Shapiro. Kaylee Ann Sigafus. Marissa H. Simon. Yulia Veselevsky. Mary Kate E. Vogelman. Master of Science in Occupational Therapy. Hannah Michelle Adelsheimer. Cynthia Karen Birnbaum. Megan Kate Blair. Shannon Alexandra Blaney. Molly Chothani. Sarah Noel Cody. Alexandria M. Sigan. Alexis Lee Daggett. Sarah Kathleen Daly. Stephanie DeFazio. Nicole Del Busto. Kristen Nicole Dolenti. Stacy M. Fromhold. 
Emily Elizabeth Hendricks, Adam Clay Hosterman, Gina Nicole Inglesi, Megan Elizabeth Juban, Kristen Nicole Kaplowitz, Brianne Nicole Karsayski, Ashley Marie Kinton, Julie Kozik, Mark Todd Larson Jr., Chloe E. Leach, Jessica Page Lesnoy, Tara Ann Lukic, Caitlin T. Magonson, Jessica D. McGuire, Natalie Jean Miller, Emily R. Middleman, Madison Page Oaks, Jillian Mayumi Oshita, Sarah E. Ostrowski, Jenna Rosette Price, Dana Lee Scott, Erica Sheehan, Nicole Marie Smithson, Jennifer Lynn Snyder, Sophie Kate Swallow, Tally Ariel Tangier, Rebecca Lee Tate, Renee J. Theringer, Lindsay Rebecca Toby, Olivia Blake Tracy, Elizabeth R. R. Van Horn, Alexandra J. Wallowich, Andrew Joseph Welsh, Colleen Wismer, Emily Witz, Tyler Zippe, Master of Science in Clinical Audiology, Nazreen Al Otebi, Jasmine Aurora, Masood Baharian, Nalufar Bokei, Fariba Danak, Mata Eshlami, Glenn Curtis Hole, Eid Mortazavi, Ida Tafreshi Hosseini, Master of Public Health, Okachukwu Ibolaju, John Gerald McCann, Yusiwa Gideon Obibi. Mr. President, upon the recommendation of the faculty of the Department of Occupational Therapy in the College of Education and Rehabilitation, along with the faculty of the biomedicine programs from the College of Health Sciences, the faculty of the Osborne College of Audiology, and the faculty of the Pennsylvania College of Optometry, I am pleased to present to you the class of 2020, all of whom have fulfilled the requirements for the degrees Doctor of Occupational Therapy, Doctor of Philosophy and Biomedicine, Doctor of Audiology, and Doctor of Optometry. I recommend that these earned degrees be awarded to these candidates at this time. Candidates for the Doctor of Occupational Therapy, Doctor of Philosophy and Biomedicine, Doctor of Audiology, and Doctor of Optometry degrees, upon the recommendation of your faculty, I, representing the Board of Trustees, by power vested in it by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, do now individually confer upon you your earned degree. We recognize each of you as your name is announced. Doctor of Occupational Therapy, Dr. Josie Ann Bachman, Dr. Rebecca Barrow, Dr. Sidney Carnival, Doctor of Philosophy in Biomedicine, Dr. Ching-Ching Tan, Doctor of Audiology, Online Bridge Program, Dr. Anat Ben Horan, Dr. Kathleen Felicity Dwyer, Dr. Brittany Carol Schuett, 
Doctor of Audiology Residential Program. Dr. Adiam Amare. Dr. Olivia Marie Bologna. Dr. Paige Rebecca Bransdorfer. Dr. Victoria Ray Buck. Dr. Katrina Nicole Caban. Dr. Tomas R. Cabrera. Dr. Brianna E. Casey. Dr. Jacqueline Penny Churchill. Dr. Deidre Elizabeth Cregan. Dr. Piera P. Darmetta. Dr. Evan Ford Draper. Dr. Jenna Francis Fenton. Dr. Alyssa Elaine Gable. Dr. Michaela Maureen Hattie. Dr. Elisa Ann Oyos. Dr. Samantha Taylor Izzy. Dr. Marin Ann Jacob. Dr. Brooke Ann Jamgochen. Dr. Mara Noel Kelly. Dr. Megan Marie Labee. Dr. Allison Nathalia Lukomsky. Dr. Anthony Joseph Olivetti. Dr. Maria Pina Ragunis. Dr. Emily Cecilia Regan. Dr. Abigail Rose Ratinsky. Dr. Lindsay June Saltzman. Dr. Kelsey Adair Skinner. Dr. Alina Rose Swirsky. Dr. Taylor Thompson. Dr. Eugen Wang. Dr. Christy Marie Williamson. Doctor of Optometry Accelerated Scholars Program. Dr. Harjus Singh Alec. Dr. Elise Lillian Baer. Dr. Matthew R. Ernesty. Dr. Kasvin V. Engineer. Dr. Jonathan Raymond Fabrizini. Dr. Laura Elise Gutson. Dr. Cameron Keith Housley. Dr. Emily Rose McNearney. Dr. Jennifer Ann Minnick. Dr. Rebecca Lynn Morin. Dr. Fiza Tarek. Dr. Ryan Yi. Doctor of Optometry, Traditional Program. Dr. Ashley Acosta. Dr. Ashwanti R. Agarwal. Dr. Zakia Amanda Alhout. Dr. Alexandra Amy Alvarez. Dr. Sabahat Umjad. Dr. Benjamin Peter Andrews. Dr. Christina Nicole Andrews. Dr. Raquel Portia Antoine. Dr. Jasmeet Kaur Ajala. Dr. Brian Baldovino. Dr. Amanda Bancroft. Dr. Nikhil Deep Bunsel. Dr. Safira Zafar Buta. 
Dr. Kevin George Bird. Dr. Dominic Latre Brown. Dr. Kelsey Remmel Brown. Dr. Alexandra Catherine Budd. Dr. Kristen Ann Cabrera. Dr. Jessica Lynn Celestino. Dr. Russell Wayne Chapius III. Dr. Janice Chow. Dr. Tina Choi. Dr. Seyun Wei Choi. Dr. Alyssa Marie Chrisman. Dr. Michelle Kaying Chung. Dr. Catherine Rose Chafee. Dr. Kelly Ann Cohen. Dr. Sean Francis Connell. Dr. Brendan S. Connors. Dr. Ty Chrissy. Dr. Samantha D. Cerniak. Dr. Raul Danda. Dr. Selma Hashimi Dawood. Dr. Caitlin Page Davis. Dr. Laura A. Davis. Dr. Tom Dellinger. Dr. Gina Nicole DiRico. Dr. Amisha Desai. Dr. Thomas Raphael DiBenedetto. Dr. Trevor H. Dixon. Dr. Jessica T. Doe. Dr. Kristen Taylor Dunn. Dr. Salman M. Faruqi. Dr. James H. Ford. Dr. Nisma Abdelsami Gaber. Dr. Anthony G. Lombardo. Dr. Christine M. Gearinger. Dr. Annie B. Govan. Dr. Nicole Elise Grusin. Dr. Abuzer Syed Hassan. Dr. Kimberly Ann Henches. Dr. Melissa Rose Herman. Dr. Rebecca Lauren Hoff. Dr. Stephen Hawan. Dr. Jacob R. Hunker. Dr. Madeline Therese Junker. Dr. Lauren Brittany Kamachi. Dr. Chunpreet Kataria. Dr. Ramandeep Kaur. Dr. Quartelaine Khalid. Dr. Ormi V. Katri. Dr. Alyssa Kurgan. Dr. Michael Kim. Dr. Saidiva Koma. Dr. Audrey Blair Korenik. Dr. Miriam Korik. Dr. Stephanie L. Krieg. Dr. Jordan Elizabeth Lamb. Dr. Cynthia Shuling Lau. Dr. Jairo Antonio Loya Grijalva. 
Dr. Alex Christopher Lupolt. Dr. Rohina M. Malik. Dr. Tasmin M. Maner. Dr. Carissa Lynn Manco. Dr. Emil Martirosian. Dr. Nikki B. Meta. Dr. Monahill M. Morza. Dr. Jacob Andrew Muberry. Dr. Parminder Singh Multani. Dr. Apeksha Nagar. Dr. Ja Tun Nai. Dr. Dong Fong Suzanne Nguyen. Dr. Stephen Wen. Dr. Kyle Wayne Nichols. Dr. Graham O'Brien. Dr. Heidi Hakala Olian. Dr. Shia David Oratz. Dr. Anita V. Pandya. Dr. Lisa Margarita Parkins. Dr. Cassandra Joe Pastier. Dr. Hiral Pomodbai Patel. Dr. Kushbu J. Patel. Dr. Priyanka Patel. Dr. Shivanji Patel. Dr. Sean Lawrence Patrick. Dr. Paige Nicole Paulus. Dr. Jillian Shin Penny. Dr. Reed B. Pett. Dr. Tony Lee Phillips. Dr. Andrew James Pizetzner. Dr. Jason Poon. Dr. Randy Nathan Poon. Dr. Kyler James Pop. Dr. Angeline Marie Rapone. Dr. Jenna Lee Reed. Dr. Stephanie Marie Reiter. Dr. Christina Marie Rosano. Dr. Cameron Michael Rowe. Dr. Ali Sajad. Dr. Swapinpreet Kaur Sandhu. Dr. Patrick. Dr. John Patrick Sapone. Dr. Shiza Sarfraz. Dr. Emily R. Scannell. Dr. Emily Kathleen Seitz. Dr. Margie Paresh Shah. Dr. Sabina Sherman. Dr. Emily Elizabeth Smith. Dr. Mercedes Delgadio Smith. Dr. Sydney Victoria Snap. Dr. Jessica Mary Spearing. Dr. Akerta R. Sran. Dr. Matthew Steller. Dr. Allison Lee Stemko. Dr. Emerjohn Souser. Dr. Joseph Stephen Zorantini. Dr. Anson Tam. Dr. Janice Y. Tan. 
Dr. Ariel Jordan Taylor. Dr. Sandra Irene Tenzer. Dr. Monica Rose Thoreau. Dr. Ikra Udin. Dr. Allison Kayla F. Vera. Dr. Vinit Verk. Dr. Yana G. Volodarsky. Dr. Nicholas Wong. We will now recite the Oath of Professionalism. Please follow along with me. With full deliberation, I freely and solemnly pledge that I will practice the art and science of my chosen profession faithfully and conscientiously and to the fullest scope of my competence. I will uphold and honorably promote by example and action the highest standards, ethics, and ideals of my chosen profession. I will provide professional care for those who seek my services with concern, with compassion, and with due regard for their human rights and dignity without discrimination. I will place the treatment of those whom I serve above personal gain and strive to see that none shall lack for proper care with their welfare my utmost concern. I will maintain absolute confidentiality of all information that is provided by those who seek my services. I will continuously strive to broaden my knowledge and my skills to deliver new and efficacious means to enhance my services. I will do my utmost to serve my community, my country, and humankind. I hereby commit myself to be steadfast in the performance of this, my solemn oath and obligation. Thank you. On behalf of the South University Alumni Association, I'm honored to join you today and congratulate you for reaching this monumental achievement. Only you and your family realize the sacrifices you have made to reach this moment. Not only financial sacrifices, but great sacrifices of time, tremendous effort, and anxiety evoking stress that you and only you had to endure to reach this moment, but you made it. The Alumni Association, of which you are now the newest members, is here as a wonderful resource for you in the years ahead. We have built on the knowledge and experience of the alumni who came before us, and we want to be of benefit to you. We're eager to provide professional help in your new endeavors, and I hope that you will think of us as a resource and continue to be part of this institution for years to come. Soon you will receive your Salus University pin, Please accept this pin as a small token of our appreciation. Upon arrival, I invite you to put it on and continue to wear it with pride and professionalism. As always, remember that each day you walk into your place of employment, that you are representing South and the very best of your profession. Finally, I ask one simple favor of you. Do not forget us. We are your Salus family. Keep in touch with us and let us know if any of us can be of assistance to you in any way. We enjoy hearing from each and every one of you. On a personal note, I remember doing, sitting where you are uh, 18 years ago. My wife and I were graduating after having gone through 9-11. And I can tell you personally, from the experiences that both of us have achieved and experienced throughout our careers, you'll find changes in your career of things you won't even be able to imagine. Things you'll enjoy and things of new experiences that you'll be able to take advantage of. So as this time seems very uncertain, I encourage all of you to look forward with positivity and just have an understanding that the Salus University of Education that you have will be a positive experience driving you forward. So on behalf of the Salus University Alumni Association, Board of Directors, and all of our 14,000 alumni, 
Congratulations. We wish you and your family health, happiness, and much success. Congratulations, you deserve it.